Hi there, traders. This is Brad Gilbert with the FX Market Insight for the 29th of June. All right, it's that time of the month again. We have the uh, month end fixing coming up. But just having a look at the major currency pairs, see what's going on. I mean, it's been one of those weird, eerie sort of weeks. Uh, we have seen a few moves up and down, but it's been sort of the start of the week, like Euro was slowly climbing, and then the rest of the week it's sort of slowly fallen. Uh, Sterling's had a bit more of a progressive move to, to the downside. A little bit of choppy trading activity around 131 the figure yesterday. But you know what? There's a little bit of cash in that first uh, spike down on that stop loss run. The Aussie just dribbling lower with the um, its correlating buddies there, the Euro, Sterling and Kiwi. And the Kiwi as well, just slowly drifting lower. Once again, a little bit of choppy price action around that support line around 68 the figure, making it a little bit hard. Now, dollar yen continues to sort of gyrate. I mean, I, I can't see any sort of clear trading dolly in just at the moment. Um, it just doesn't seem to be doing a hell of a lot. US 10 years, which is the orange line here, starting to sort of make a little bit of a uh, bit of headwind. It's been just dribbling off the last sort of week or so. Now, uh, dollar cad. Now, look at oil. Oil is down at 73 bucks. That's the green bars there. Dollar cad's making an effort to try and re-correlate with oil. It will at some stage. So I'm expecting... You know, I know it's in the middle of nowhere, but I'm expecting a move, a couple hundred point move down, right? And this is where uh, today's Canadian GDP numbers may come into play. So that's the overall picture on the majors, okay? So we're starting to get a bit of um, a bit of love on the, on the whole, okay? Aussie down, Kiwi down. Euro's down a bit, but it has started to trade sideways and, uh, and sterling down as well. Now, that's a good sign that these four currency pairs are correlating because generally they do. And when they aren't, that's a sure sign that something's up. Now, what you can see on the dollar side of things with um, dollar yen and, and uh, dollar cad for that matter, you know, they aren't exactly clear, which is a little bit strange in, in a way, you know, but there's geopolitical events impacting those two currency pairs and that's where uh, that trouble's come through. Now, if we come back and just have a look at the overall dollar and what's going on in the rest of the market, okay, you can see the dollar index uh, slowly picking itself up off the floor and starting to look for uh, potentially new highs. And, and coming into next week, uh, we do have the uh, US non-farm payrolls on Friday, amongst other things. So that's where we can really see a big move. Look on the dailies, I mean, the resistance line up here isn't like huge, but it is starting to break higher. And if it gets above that uh, previous high, well then it you know, probably sets, sets us up for a run towards 96. Equity markets, just uh, on the day, uh, US equities up a little bit, okay? So that means there's no real concerns about anything at this stage, no trade tariff issues, no, nothing else to sort of really impact. That's one spot where you can really see a raw nerve. Now, the um, Nikkei is due to open up 50 points up. We've just had some uh, CPI numbers out of uh, Japan and employment numbers. The employment numbers were slightly off, which is a little bit strange because employment in Japan is usually pretty tight. Uh, but the CPI numbers are a little bit stronger, so they sort of counteract each other. I don't think that's going to have too much impact on the Nikkei, but you can be watching that. That opens up in about 20 minutes. All right, you may see something on the yen crosses. But uh, that's pretty much it as far as the US dollar goes uh, and the majors. Now, if you're looking at... Um, um, just at the uh, what's coming up. I mean, the major focus for me is, you know, we've got the final GDP numbers out of um, uh, the UK. We've also got some CPI numbers out of Euro. I think the CPI numbers are probably going to be the pick. Euro is slightly undecided whether it keeps going lower or not. And hopefully, well, if we get some really weak CPI numbers, well, then that's going to go into a, uh, you know, a more dovish basket as far as the ECB is concerned and definitely push that support line down there around 115, 10, 20. Uh, coming into the end of the, end of the North American session, Canadian GDP figures. Now, if we get really strong numbers here, you know, who knows, we might, uh, then that supports that move down on dollar cab, which, which would bring in the correlation with oil. But at this stage, it's a little bit uh, loose, that's for sure. Now, trading conditions, they aren't bad, but just be aware it's month end fixing, okay? And, not only uh, just variables on the stock market's moves, you can always, various companies or fund managers have various uh, fixing requirements and that can create, uh, especially when they're 2, 3 p.m., I think they've made it a little bit looser. Um, 
on London time. You know, in my day when I was training in London, the um, the fix on Fridays or, or the fix on the Monday was you know somewhere around two and three p.m. Now, because of all that live or action a few years ago, they've they've opened up the door a bit to be uh, you know a couple of days before or even throughout the day. So just be aware it's month end fix. It'd be good to get rid of um, this week in particular, which has been a real real sort of slow drag. Now, just actually on that, I'm just going to show there's a, there's a few other pop potential opportunities uh, on the on some of these majors. So I've covered the major data there for the for the fund of traders, what they need to be aware of. But if you come back down here, um, there's some some housing credit numbers in Australia which may be worth a look at. Okay, Aussie is moving technically down, so that would be a, a good thing. Um, you got some, you know, retail sales numbers, employment numbers out of Germany. They're always worth a bit of a look. Of course, you've got the high impacting UK GDP numbers. Um, check out the, um, the, as I said, the inflation numbers, the flash numbers, the early numbers for, for inflation in the Eurozone. That will be uh, very important for uh, potential, the next potential move. And then as you come into that North American session, there's uh, another, well, it should be reasonably lively because there's a couple of good releases here that are coming out. You've got the, um, the consumption numbers now, they are definitely worth a look. You've got the Canadian GDP figures, and don't forget the University of Michigan sentiment numbers there as well. It is the final numbers, okay? So usually the final, final numbers are much more refined, but if there is variance there, then we may see something move on the dollar. Don't forget the dollar sort of sentiment at the moment is upward. So uh, the best, easiest trade is strong US numbers. Um, with that oil, I, I mean, I, I still think that uh, that, that Dollar cab will catch up. It's just one of those things when, you know, I'm not going to sort of beat around the bush and say it's today or tomorrow. I don't know when it's going to catch up, but it will. That correlation between oil and, and cat is very tight historically. So something's going to give there. Um, and one last thing for those uh, traders, just to give you a full coverage of all pairs, let's just have a look at the, um, to finish up, let's have a look at the uh, yen crosses. Now, it's been, a lot of these currency pairs have just been hacked up over the last uh, sort of week, Aussie, Aussie yen in particular is one pair that's been just sliding up and down through uh, the cloud. Kiwi has been very uniform um, and cable with the pressure on sterling too, breaking all, all uh, time frames, hourly, daily and weekly, it's under huge pressure. So we've got a bit of downward pressure on sterling in, but this is where you can see sideways activity on Euro. It's a little bit different to sterling. There's potential chance for a um, move high here. But what we need is we need dollar yen to give us clear direction. At this stage, it's sort of one day up, one day down, and it's making it a little bit harder. So that's where we are there. Now, oil, just to finish up, 73 bucks 30. You can see that green line probably just vaguely. Uh, CAD yen, the perfect or the, the clear oil trade, is starting to move higher. But don't beat yourself up. I mean, this has by no means been an easy trade. Check out the, the price action here it's been quite dreadful. Okay, so it's all about timing and a bit of luck. But uh, the yen crosses at this stage, you know, dollar yen doesn't really, to me, have super clear direction. So I'm uh, probably holding off at this stage. But next week, we do, and these things are building up for a potential move, um, especially like Euro, it's forming into that sort of wedge formation. We've got downward pressure on sterling. You'd expect CAD yen to keep moving higher clear momentum down on Kiwi Yen and sideways on Aussie Yen. So anyway, there's going to be movements here on Dolly Yen. We'll probably hear more about the trade tariffs uh, going forward. But um, and that's pretty much it. So just be aware, month end fixing, no need to rush into this. We've got some good economic numbers coming out in, in Europe and uh, North America. Check those out. And otherwise, have a good weekend. If you have any questions, I'll see you in the trade zone. Cheerio, chaps. See you there.